Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, let's talk some boxing. But before we do, all credit and all praise and thanks to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Without him, I would not be here today talking to you guys. I want to give you something from Acts 5, 29. It says, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. And in short, what I just want to say is, if you live your life unto God, you never have to worry about feedback from other human beings, including your own self. Depression comes from thoughts, thoughts that we tell ourselves. But instead, we'll look to God for him to talk to us. And you can never go wrong that way. So look to obey God. See, we're not in control of life. Life goes on whether we're here or not. Life is the only thing that has control and it does what it wants to do. And it just so happens, life is Jesus. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. So it's better if... You submit unto Jesus. I call him my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, that's like a combinational saying. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Like peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know what I mean? But really what it means is Lord. And that means someone I serve. Savior. And that means someone who delivers me. Alright? So, when I say my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. sound like a combinational kind of thing. What I really mean to say is. The one who is in control of me and all of us. And the one who can deliver us from our own selves. You know what I'm saying? Alright, let's get into the boxing. So you saw a couple of flashes of some things here. Lineal champions. That's the man who beat the man. Undisputed boxing champions. That's the dude who got all the titles. He looks like the guy at the top of the division. People say the, the guy that you can't dispute that he's the champion. All right. First point. True champion doesn't necessarily have to be the undisputed boxing champion. Neither does he have to be the lineal champion. I'll give you a case where we have exceptions to the rule for both cases. Let me start off with the lineal boxing champion. If you look in the light heavyweight division at present. I'm just going to flick to the light heavyweight division right now. And in the current time, the lineal champion is Adonis Stevenson. He beat Chad Dawson, as you can see here. Clearly, Chad Dawson beat Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins beat Jean Pastel, right? Now, he's a lineal champion. But everybody knows he ain't the man at light heavyweight right now. The man at light heavyweight right now is Andre Ward. Without question. He holds three of the four belts necessary to become undisputed lightweight champion. And Andre Ward beat the man who had those belts, which was Sergey Kovalev. So if we were to rank the lightweights in the lightweight division, we go number one is Andre Ward, number two is Sergey Kovalev, and then number three is Adonis Stevenson. He's the third best dude, but he ain't the man of the division, right? And to be the man of the division... You got to beat the man of the division, generally speaking. But in this case, the man of the division was Chad Dawson. Adonis Stevenson beat him, but then Adonis Stevenson didn't do anything else. He never fought any other top echelon uh, light heavyweight to be considered the man. Now, I'm not saying that Donna Stevens is not a true champion because we've seen him defend his title successfully. That's an attribute of a true champion. A real champion, and not a titleist, is someone who can defend his championship title. He stays at the top, irrespective of whoever is facing him. That's one aspect of a true champion. The second one is a true champion can take a loss and he can bounce back. Right? So... Say a true champion loses, he's still going to come back up to the top and be a champion again because he's a true champion. So these are attributes of a true champion, a real champion. Now, some people say, well, lineal champions are the true champions. They'd be wrong. 
You know how we know this? Sugar Ray Robinson. I'm going to use his name. He's, he's probably one of the most respected and known boxers in the history of boxing, especially by people who know boxing. Sugar Ray Robinson won the welterweight title of the world from Tommy Bell. Not from Tommy Bell. What am I saying? Pl fighting against Tommy Bell. Do you know that title was vacant? Do you know Sugar Ray Robinson fought for a vacant title? He did not face Marty Servo because Marty Servo didn't want to face him. So Marty Servo vacated the title and Sugar Ray Robinson fought for the vacant title. He was even supposed to face uh, Freddie Cochran. And Freddie Cochran won no part of Sugar Ray Robinson. He was, he was a mandatory for the title for a long time. Now my point anyway is this. Are you saying because Sugar Ray Robinson didn't beat Marty Servo or Freddie Cochran that Sugar Ray Robinson, at least when they were champions, that Sugar Ray Robinson wasn't a true champion? So you can't go by the argument that a lineal champion is the definition of a true champion. It helps. It's an accomplishment. And true champions do become lineal champions. But it is not the defining quality. Undisputed boxing champions. People like to talk about that a lot. Undisputed boxing champions. They say they are true champions. I'm going to give you one example of an undisputed boxing champion. And he's the titleist. He ain't no true champion. Okay? I'm just, I'm just being real with you guys. Okay? This dude... At welterweight, we're going down to welterweight here, was a guy that beat Jose Napolis. His name is Billy Backus. Now, some people, they go fanatical about these guys and their names. They would say, Billy Backus, he was great. He beat this guy. You know, listen, man. Billy Backus beat Jose Napolis in a controversial fashion. Today, we would call it controversial. The referee stopped the fight. Billy Backus was butting Jose Napolis. I'm not saying that he didn't land those right hooks on Napolis. Billy Backus was a softball, right? And it's say, in fact, go watch the fight. Jose Napolis versus Billy Backus won. He fought him twice, right? Just go watch it. And the fight will explain everything to you. you. You will understand what I'm talking about. Turn off the narration by the commentator so it doesn't influence you and just watch the fight, right? In short, Billy Backus beat Jose Napolis when he shouldn't have beat him. And Jose Napolis set the record straight. Billy Backus didn't touch him much in the second fight. Napolis beat him so bad that he couldn't see in either of his eyes. The doctor had to stop the fight and that was over, right? But in short, what I'm saying is Billy Backus was undisputed welterweight champion. It was really for one fight because it's, he never defended his title successfully. I'm going to show you right here. So this is where he beat Jose Napolis here. They call it a TKO in round four. It, it, man, it's just so ridiculous how that fight went. I, I mean, the referee cut into the fight. Dude, dude and they were scrapping out, right? And then the referee stopped the fight because he looked at uh, he stopped it. It wasn't the doctor that stopped the fight. It wasn't Jose Napolis' corner that stopped the fight. He stopped the fight. All right, and that's how Billy Bacchus actually won that fight. Napolis was fighting a little bit stupid, but I can understand why. He thought, oh, this guy, I'm going to put away this guy real soon because he was tagging him up easy. You know what I mean? I mean, to be to Billy Backus' credit, Billy Backus was an up and rising uh, star. And Billy Backus was fighting pretty good, all right? He was fighting pretty good. He had beaten one or two, you know, really decent fighters of the day. So I understand. But still, Jose Naples was tagging this dude at will, okay? And Billy Backus had a little skill. He was kind of, he was getting hit, but he was kind of riding the punches, you know what I mean? But nonetheless, my point is, no, Jose Napolis set that record straight the next time they fought. All right? Billy Beck has never defended his welterweight world title successfully. He's a titleist. So you can be an undisputed champion and everybody be like, oh, it's not disputable you're the champion. No, it is disputable you're the champion. You might win it off a fluke. You know what I mean? You may win it as an achievement, but you, you ain't a true champion until you defend your title and show that you really belong at the top. Right? And Billy Backus didn't belong at the top because he never, he never became champion ever again. Ever. Okay? It was a fluke. 
Like Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson. That's a fluke. Buster Douglas never became heavyweight champion again. You cannot put Buster Douglas, you cannot put Billy Backus ahead of Vladimir Klitschko because Klitschko didn't become undisputed champion and it was harder to become undisputed champion. Too much politics and all of that. Floyd Mayweather, you can't put him above Floyd Mayweather. You can't put, you, you, what are you stupid? You can't put him a, a, above Oscar De La Hoya, Perna Whitaker, uh, and welterweight that is. Felix Trinidad, are you stupid? I mean, so many champions that are real, bona fide, true champions uh, that weren't undisputed boxing champions, especially of recent times. It's very hard to have done that because there's so many belts. But it is a great achievement. Now, Gennady Golovkin, he's trying to be undisputed middleweight champion. And I have a bone to pick with Gennady in just taking up a belt. The WBC belt, the most honored belt out there. He just picked it up. He didn't. He never fought for it. So if he becomes undisputed uh, well, um, middleweight champion, he never fought for the WBC title. You see what I'm saying? There's something wrong with that. Something seriously wrong with that. You just collect a title? You're just a belt collector. That's what I call uh, Gennady Golovkin. A belt collector. He never fought for it. Alright? He wanted a belt. What you want a belt for? You're just a belt collector? That's what you want to collect belts? Or you want to really be the dude of the division? And show people you are the dude of the division? See, that's my problem with some of these guys. You fight for a belt. You earn your stripes. So I have a problem with Gennady Golovkin just collecting the WBC belt. I'm sorry. And you can say, oh, Canelo Alvarez threw away. No, Canelo Alvarez was trying to uh, negotiate. And Gennady Golovkin, they didn't want to give him the time to negotiate. If they had said, WBC, give us some more time to negotiate, it would have happened. But Gennady Golovkin wanted to collect a belt. He wanted to collect the trinket. So you could say he was undisputed. And that's just weak. You try to get that. You try to get a guy with a name inside of inside of there against you. You don't try to just collect a trinket. So that's why I disagree with people who say that undisputed uh, boxing champions are true champions. I disagree with that. They're saying, "Oh, there's only one." Yeah, it, it, it looks like there's only one, but re one great fighter out of them. But how many fighters do these guys duck? How many fighters do these guys avoid? Sugar Ray Robinson versus Aaron Pryor is a perfect example of that. Aaron Pryor never got his chance against Sugar Ray Robinson. I'm not Sugar Ray Robinson. What am I saying? Sugar Ray Leonard. Okay. He never got his chance. And y'all could jump high, jump low. I know Aaron Pryor would have given Sugar Ray Leonard the fits. Just his style. Leonard wasn't going to be able to handle that just like that. Everybody knows that. And everybody who knows boxing knows Aaron Pryor's style. Freddie Roach borrowed from it. Because Manny Pacquiao's style is very similar to it. Throw in the twist, Manny Pacquiao's a southpaw, and you really have a hard time. Pacquiao versus Leonard? I got Pacquiao, baby. I got Pacquiao. Leonard's a hell of a boxer, but he didn't want nothing to do with Aaron Pryor, so I got Pacquiao. All right? When y'all talk about Thomas the Hitman Hearns versus Floyd Mayweather, I always say, Mike McCollum. <laughs> cough, cough. Mike McCollum, cough, cough. Hearns ain't want nothing to do with Mike McCollum. All right? I'm listening to uh, this joker. What's his name? The dude saying, uh, oh, Hearns would have put Floyd to sleep. Man, shut up. Shut up. You you from the crunk gym. You know better than that, Manny Manuel Stewart. I call him a joker, but he ain't no joker. Right? I'm just saying. That's emotion there. All right? If you if, if if he could have put Floyd to sleep, you would have had Mike McCallum fight him. That's all I gotta say. Mike McCallum. <coughs> and I cough. That's all I gotta say about that. Hearns would have fought Mike McCallum. But he knew, because he put his boy Donald Curry in there, and Mike McCallum knocked his ass out. Alright? If he had put Hearns in there against Mike McCallum, he knew Hearns was gonna get knocked out. Mike McCallum always used to beat up Hearns in sparring, man. They got footage on him. Hearns got beat by Aaron Pryor. Outpointed. So when I hear all you guys, oh, because Emmanuel Stewart said it, 
Oh, Thomas Hearns with a knockdown Floyd. How the hell he knocking out Floyd Mayweather? How? Explain it. Don't tell me he got power and he have a sharp jab. Because that's all he had. He had a nice little uppercut on the inside too. But that's it. And Floyd bobbing and weave like a mother. Mm, I could curse right now, but I ain't going to curse. He bobs and weaves. He slips and slides. Dude, you don't even understand. Go watch Floyd Mayweather versus Tony Papp. That tell you a foretaste of what Floyd would have done to him. Okay? Y'all don't understand, man. Y'all don't understand. I, I know the skills of fighters, man. Tommy Hearns was a, not, it was a skinny dude at welterweight. He was dried out at welterweight. He ain't surviving Floyd. I'm just saying. The competition Floyd has faced is better than what Sugar Ray Leonard has faced. You got Chinny Hearns. He fought him. Okay. Mayweather faced Manny Pacquiao. Sugar Ray Leonard wasn't nothing to do with Manny Pacquiao. I'm talking about Aaron Pryor. For those of you who don't understand. Didn't want nothing to do with Manny Pacquiao. That's why he praised Manny Pacquiao. I was like, Manny Pacquiao, great. I remember when Sugar Ray Leonard was back in Manny Pacquiao to beat Floyd Mayweather back in, I think it was 2011. He interviewed him or something like that. Talking about Floyd Duck and Pacquiao. Punk and stuff. Punk talk, man. Punk talk. Y'all know. If you, if you Sugar Ray Leonard, you should know. Floyd would have beat Pacquiao back in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. He would have beat him anytime. And we know this because of the style Floyd Mayweather employs, which is a ambush style. Pacquiao was better prepared for Floyd Mayweather when he faced him in 2015 than if he was to face him in 2012. Floyd would have knocked him out. Because that's called a reckless style. Floyd gonna catch you. And he's gonna put your lights out. That's what Stephen A. Smith thought Floyd was gonna knock Pacquiao out, but Pacquiao didn't jump in on Floyd. He wasn't doing that stutter step and jumping in. Do you see him jumping around like a bunny? Stutter step, stutter step, jump. No, he wasn't doing that. He wasn't doing that against Floyd. So Floyd could knock his ass out. Floyd would have timed him. Y'all don't, y'all just like y'all don't know boxing, man. Y'all don't know boxing, man. Y'all don't know boxing. Y'all don't know what it is, man. Don't let Floyd Mayweather fool you with his his his, his talks and his antics. Dude is a serious boxing scholar, man. Dude know his boxing. He talks some real crap at times, but he knows his boxing. You know what I'm saying? Let's move on. So let's look at some of the undisputed boxing champions here. Let's look at some of them. So in the heavyweight division, we had Jack Dempsey was the first, you know, one to be undisputed. Now, undis it wasn't called undisputed before that, right? And I, the reason why I'm telling you this is because they didn't have no boxing bodies. So it was called undisputed because two boxing bodies, as you can see there, the NY. SAC and the NBA, aka now known as the WBC and the WBA, uh, but both of them, you know, right? They, they, those two titles combined made you undisputed. If you had one or the other of them, you wasn't undisputed. You understand? So Jack Dempsey was the first guy to be undisputed. All right. Then was Gene Tunney, Max Schmeling, Jack Sharkey, Primo Canera, and Primo Canera is another one that was just a hyped up dude, man. He was a hyped up dude. Okay? Just saying. Alright? The mob had him there. Then you got Max Beer, who is. Uh, I don't want to talk about him. James J. Braddock. Everybody talk about these guys. Legendary fighters. And they were legendary fighters. Okay, whatever, man. Joe Lewis. I'm not saying that. Hey, watch. Max Beer did beat his fair share of names. Alright? About two or three of them. And James J. Braddock did. Alright? Don't, don't get it twisted, right? But Duke can hold on to a title. He wasn't captain of the mountain for very long. Max Bear was captain of the mountain for one fight. And he lost it in his first defense. James J. Braddock, captain of the mountain for one fight. Lost it to Joe Lewis. Okay, Joe Lewis obviously was a true champion. Even though he fought a lot of bums 
while he was champion. All right, a lot of fodder. It's all good. Then we had Ezra, Ezra Charles. Then we had Jersey Joe Walcott. Okay, Jersey was an old man when he became world champion. Then you had Rocky Marciano. Then you had Floyd Patterson. All right, Floyd Patterson uh, occupied the vacant title by Rocky Marciano. After Floyd passed Patterson, and Floyd Patterson was a good champion, right? Rocky Marciano was a good champion, all right? Ezra Charles was a good champion. You know, Joe Lewis was a good champion, you know what I'm saying? These these were, these were real, these guys were the real deal, okay? I'm not, I'm not trying to clown them or nothing. All right? Then Injamar Johansson got it for a second. He, he, he kind of, as we say, he upset Floyd Patterson. Floyd Patterson got it back. And then Floyd Patterson lost to Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston's, uh, his aura, his reputation was one of a, a guy who would destroy you because he was so strong, powerful, and he had a great punch. Okay. And then Liston came. He got beat by Muhammad Ali. And again, all of these guys, they had their defenses. So you can't say nothing about them, right? And then you had Muhammad Ali. Then you had... Uh, then you had Joe Fraser. Okay, Joe Fraser had the vacant title. Basically, Ali left it behind, and he became champion. Then you had George Foreman who beat Joe Fraser. Then you had Ali who beat George Foreman. Then you had Leon Spinks who beat Ali again. Leon Spinks, he ain't no true champion, and y'all know this. Now the young guy, he had a formula to beat Muhammad Ali. He was relentless and everything, and he, he got through. But don't make it sound like, you know, Ali came back and beat his ass. You know what I'm saying? All right, and Ali he beat him to get I think it was the WBA title. It wasn't. It wasn't. He was like the the last undisputed uh, heavyweight champion of Ali's era. Then after that, you had uh, my boy Larry Holmes, but he never he was never undisputed. You understand what I'm saying? Larry Holmes wasn't undisputed. Now you notice there was only two title belts you had to get to be undisputed, right? Larry Holmes was a hell of a champion. You know what I mean? Hell of a champion. Then you had Mike Tyson. He was the one. Now they had the IBF in there. And he was undisputed. He had three belts, right? And I, like I said before, and I will say it again, Mike Tyson beat nobody. I don't care what y'all say. I know what I mean when I say nobody. I, he did beat some good fighters, but what I mean to say is nobody of note that you could say, "Oh, this dude, he was at the top of his game." Mike Tyson beat him, and he was a really good fighter. You know, mm, no one like that. Nobody. All right, nobody coming off of wins or anything like that. All right, Mike Tyson was just kind of feeding off the carcasses of bodies, man. <laughs> no disrespect to nobody, but Bone Crusher Smith was a pretty good win. Don't get me wrong, but Bone Crusher had a reputation about him, and Tyson was able to beat him up. But in Tyson's championship career, I don't care if it's before or after he was beaten by Evander Holyfield. Ain't nobody a note that Tyson ever beat in his career at championship level, right? He did beat Razor Roddick, and that was a good fight. That was a that was a good ass fight. Them two fights was good fights. Razor Roddick was a good fight. Bone Crusher Smith, that was a good fight too. And Bone Crusher was old but hit like a mule and everything. That was a good fight. That's it. That's about it for Mike Tyson. Ain't nobody else. Everybody else he fought that was worth something beat him. All right, it's just what it is. Like you, you can be a big Tyson fan, but just just know the reality of the situation. You know, it's what it is. People say, well, it wasn't Tyson's fight fault that the guys of his era, you know, weren't great fighters? Look, man, all I know is this. Right, Mike Tyson came from an era with Lennox Lewis. Evander Holyfield, they were in the same era as Mike Tyson. He he faced them later on in his career, so his excuses, oh, he was washed up when he faced Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis, that ain't true. <clears throat> the first time Mike Tyson met my Evander Holyfield up in the Cascade Hills was because they were going to do some training for the Olympics, whatever. And Holyfield handled him. From what I heard, Holyfield didn't ever back down. And he was, Holyfield was a cruiserweight. Tyson was a heavyweight. I know I said this before in another video, but I'm making a point. Because Mike Tyson is a marketable name to this day. Because he made his name outside the ring as this intimidating presence. To this day, people love Mike Tyson because of the, the, the sheer intensity of him. 
And so he's still sellable to this day. He in movies, all kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And it's cool. I get it. I get the aura that he presents. James Buster Douglas. Come on now. James Buster Douglas was an undisputed heavyweight champion. But he wasn't no real champion. He wasn't no true champion. If he was a true champion, he'd have defended his championship. He'd have stayed at the top or he would have reached back to the top. See what I'm saying, folks? You got to understand this, man. Let's talk. Evander Holyfield was a true champion. We all know that. Riddick Bowe was a true champion. Lennox Lewis was a true champion. All right? And I just used the heavyweight division to prove a point. Now, let's look at lineal champions. We're going to look at the heavyweight division again. All right? John L. Sullivan. This is from way back, just before Bare Knuckle Brawl days. So they got it way back. And by the way, Cyberboxing Zone is where you get this nice little highlight here. And it's really cool because I want to show you something else. James J. Corbett, Bob Fist Simmons, and then James J. Jeffries, Marvin Hart, Tommy Burns, and then the man, Jack Johnson. You know what I'm saying? And Jack Johnson went through hell, man. Hey, I mean, he, he was a real champion because he had to fight not just the guys in the ring. He had to fight the people, the white, the white supremacist kind of people, and the government just because he was, he was trying to marry white women, you know? In fact, they banned him from boxing for his activities outside of the ring. You know, this dude had to fight everybody. That's why I say Jack Johnson may be the greatest heavyweight of all time, period. Because of what he had to go through in the 1908s to 1915 times. Hell of a guy. Up to this day, they even had a law against him. I think he had to go to jail for it. That, that's some heavy duty crap, man. You know what I'm saying? And he still would be. The whole world was against him and he was still beating people. His own black people were against him. That's how much. Only like W. Day Boy, w. Day Boy wasn't against him. You know what I'm saying? The Boy or the Bois. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Anyway, then you had Jess Willard, who was the white hope that beat him. And then you had Jack Dempsey, Gene Tunney, underrated scientist, underrated fighter, beat Jack Dempsey twice, okay, beat everybody else. People say, oh, he fought this guy when he was, oh, gone through. People say all kinds of negative things about a boxer who used science and you don't give fights that you want, how you want to see them. They'll say every single negative thing you can. Gene Tunney was a better boxer, I don't care what nobody say. Than a lot of them boxers of his time. I'm talking through all divisions. And he was respected in this time. And you got Max Schmeling, Jack Sharkey, Primo Canera, who beat Jack Sharkey, obviously. Max Beard, who beat Primo Canera. Jack James J. Braddock, Joe Lewis, Ezra Charles. Now, Ezra Charles did not beat Joe Lewis, but um, how did he become lineal champion? Because uh, he fought against Jersey Joe Walkinson, the next highest guy, and therefore he was able to become champion. I don't know if it was Jersey, I think it was Jersey Joe. So you can become lineal champion by the two next highest guys. They fight one another, and so that's how you get lineal. That's how you keep continuity. And then Jersey Joe Walker came and beat as a Charles Rocky Marciano became and beat Jersey Joe Walker. And then again, there's a discontinuity there where Floyd Patterson had to fight somebody for the lineal championship, and then. Uh, Injamari Johansson, he beat uh, Floyd Patterson. Floyd Patterson comes, beat him back. Sonny Liston comes, beat Floyd Patterson. Muhammad Ali comes and beats Cassie, um, Sonny Liston twice. And there's a discontinuity again as Cassius Clay is banned from boxing. And Joe Fraser, he comes, he's the dude. George Foreman comes, beats Joe Fraser after a while. Ali comes and beats Joe Foreman. Spinks comes, beats Ali. Ali comes back and beats Spinks. Larry Holmes comes and beats Ali, um, uh, Muhammad Ali. Michael Spinks comes and beats Larry Holmes. Mike Tyson comes and beats Michael Spinks. James Buster Douglas comes and beats Mike Tyson. Evander Holyfield comes and beats James Buster Douglas. Riddick Bo comes and beats Evander Holyfield. Holyfield comes and beats back Bo. Uh, and then Michael Moore comes and he beats Evander Holyfield. 
George Foreman comes and beats Michael Moore. Shannon Briggs comes and beats George Foreman. Hassim, uh, Lennox Lewis comes and beats Shannon Briggs. Hassim Rockman comes and beats Lennox Lewis. Lewis comes back and beats Rockman. And again, Lennox Lewis retires. Vladimir Klitschko gets the fight. He beats uh, Ruslan Chagaev to become the lineal champion. And Tyson Fury comes and beats Vladimir Klitschko. Okay? So, what's nice about the lineal championship is you can see how guys beat is coming down the line because you say oh this guy beat this guy and this guy beat this guy and this guy it doesn't always go flow in a nice smooth way but the point is you can see how it happens now let's look at the welterweight division for a minute because i want to just pay attention a little bit to the welterweight division right so when you talk about the welterweight division you can start all the way back in 1888 <laughs> again this is all on the um the um Cyber boxing zone, CBZ. Okay, all of this is cyber boxing zone. I know because I went there and I checked out stuff. So you had Patty Duffy, who was the first lineal champion at welterweight. Okay, and he died. So mysterious Billy Smith. He he went on to 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 take on somebody else, and he became the lineal champion. Tommy Ryan beat him, then he vacated. So Billy Smith became the champion again by fighting whoever and then after that uh, William Matty Matthews beat Mysterious Billy Smith I like doing this because it gives you a history and a context into how the welterweight division was, was going so since the 1800s we had stuff going on we had the welterweight division even though we didn't have boxing bodies and boxing establishments this is a post bare knuckle brawl era so this is pretty interesting stuff then you had Eddie Connolly who beat uh, William Matthew Matthews, then James Rube Firms, the same year beats Eddie Connolly, and then William Matthew Matthews comes back and takes it again, and then James Rube Firms, he comes back and beats uh, William Matthew Matthews, and then uh, Jersey Joe, I'm um, not Jersey Joe, sure. Barbados Joe Walker comes and beats James Rube Firms, okay, and then, so Joe Walker, uh, Barbados Joe Walker, they call him, even though he's from Guyana, he was the dude who uh, he actually became welterweight world champion, and then after that he was beaten by Dixie Kid, and Dixie Kid uh, he vacated, and Billy Honey Melody, he was the next uh, lineal champion. He was beaten by Mike Twin Sullivan, all right, and Mike Twin Sullivan, uh, he uh, he vacated the title. So you had Wahlberg Holberg, who was beaten by Tom McCormick. Who was beaten by Matt Wills, Matt Wells, who was beaten by Mike Glover, and then of course he was beaten by Jack Breton. So Jack Breton, who's a legendary well today champion at the twenty something championship fights, um welterweight. Another guy who had a lot of welterweight championship fights was Henry Armstrong, who I didn't mention is a top welterweight as well. And and the thing about Henry Armstrong was he was so small. Dude was smaller than everybody. <laughs> By serious, I mean seriously smaller than everybody. But anyway, that's a whole story for another day. I'm gonna talk about all the goods about these great fighters in time, right? So Jack Breeden, he goes and he's exclusively fighting Ted Kid Lewis. You know, beats him. Then he comes back, beats Ted Kid Lewis. Ted Kid Lewis comes, and beats him. It's just a rivalry going on, and it goes on for like a long time. And then uh, Breeden comes, beats Ted Kid Lewis. And he, I mean, half of them twenty something fights, if more than half of them was against Ted Kid Lewis, okay? Whether it was championship or not. <laughs> and then after that, um Mickey Ward Walker beat uh Jack Jack Brayton. Alright. And Mickey Ward was championship, he had his number of fights and then Pete Latso beat Mickey Warder. And then after that Joe Dundee beat Pete Latso and then Jackie Fields beat Joe Dundee. Jack Thompson beat Jackie Fields. Tommy Freeman beat Jack Thompson. Jack Thompson comes back and beats him. Lou Brulard, he comes and beats Jack Thompson. Jackie Fields comes back in the mix and he beats Lou Brulard. And then Young Cubbert 3. I think you all know who Young Cubbert 3 is. He comes and beats Jackie Fields. And Jimmy McLarnon, the same dude who also beat... Uh, Jimmy McLarnon beat... Uh, uh, Oh, he's the ghetto. He's the ghetto wizard, Benny Leonard, right? Jimmy McLaren comes and beats uh, Young Cobra three. 
Then Barney Russ beats Jimmy McLaren. Jimmy McLaren beats Barney Russ. And Barney Russ comes back and beats Jimmy McLaren, right? Barney Russ was another good junior welterweight and welterweight. And he fought at both, both uh, weight classes. And then Henry Armstrong comes and beats Barney Russ. And then much later on in Henry Armstrong's career, Fritzy Zivit comes and beats him. And then Freddie Red Cochran. He should never have beaten Fritzy Zivit. I keep on maintaining that. He should have never beat Fritzy Zivit, but he did. Here's what it is. And Fritzy Zivit beat him back, but they didn't make the weight. So it was just what it is. Marty Server came and beat Freddie Red Cochran. Cochran was there. He wasn't doing a lot of fights, by the way. He wasn't doing a lot of championship fights because <laughs> the dude who was as mandatory, like I said before, was Sugar Ray Robinson, right? And he won't fight Robinson. And somehow he managed to spandangle his way out of that and fight Marty Servo. Marty Servo became the, the, the champion. And Servo vacated, as you can clearly see there. He vacated the title in 1946, like I said. And Sugar Ray Robinson was the dude who got the title against Tommy Bell, right? We all know that. Um... And then Kid Gabalan was the next dude. And then the dude I was telling you that Sugar Ray Robinson never fought, even though it was in his time period, Johnny Saxton. Now, Saxton, of course, became welterweight champion way after Sugar Ray Robinson was at welterweight. But the point is, Johnny Saxton was at welterweight. And he was one of the top ten welterweights. Him and the other guy. Right? I'm just saying. Braxton. And then you had um, Johnny Saxton was beaten by Tony DeMarco in 1955. DeMarco was beaten by Carmen Basilio, the legendary Carmen Basilio. And then Johnny Saxton came back and won the title against Carmen Basilio in 1956. And I think that Basilio went up in weight. Oh no, he beat um, Saxton and then he moved up in weight. There it is. Renex Carlin went up to middleweight. And then um, Virgil Atkins was the guy that uh, came back and claimed that vac uh, the vacant title. Alright, and then. Uh, John Jordan beat him, then Benny Barrett. Benny Barrett is Brady Kid Barrett is the guy that Emil Griffith beat, right? He was a good boxer. And Barrett came back, beat Griffith. Griffith came back, beat Barrett. And then Griffith, after a certain period of time, was beaten by Luis Manuel Rodriguez, who was a good Cuban fighter. And Benny Barrett is also a good Cuban fighter, by the way. And um, Emil Griffith came back and beat him, and then he went up and weight to middleweight. And Emil Griffith really made his name at junior middleweight and middleweight. That's where he really, you know. But he had he had some nice little uh, battles with some some of the guys. Curtis Cox took over that vacated title. And Curtis Cox, he was a good champion. He defended a couple of times, and then he faced Jose Napolis. We lost to him. Napolis was champion for a good period of time. Then he faced Billy Backus, lost to him by fluke, and then came back and set the record straight on that he should have really fought Billy Backus a third time just to set the record straight best of three but it didn't happen and then after that uh, Jose Napolis his long illustrious career he was beaten by the Brit John H. Stracy Stracy was beaten by Carlos Palomino and Carlos Palomino was beaten by Wilfredo Benitez Benitez was beaten by Sugar Ray Leonard as you can clearly see way up here I scrolled pretty far sorry about that Leonard was beaten by Roberto Duran. And then he came back and he beat Roberto Duran. It was a close fight. And then after he beat Roberto Duran and he whooped Hearn's tail, he then moved up. Actually, no, he retired from boxing. That's what happened. So he vacated the title. Donald Curry took over the vacated title. And Donald Curry also became the undisputed, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was the undisputed welterweight champion at the end of his reign where Lloyd Hunt gonna whipped his ass. And then Jorge Vaca uh, beat Lloyd Hunnigan. That was a good fighter. Now Hunnigan came back, he beat Jorge Vaca, and then Marlon Sterling beat Lloyd Hunnigan. Marlon Sterling was a hell of a boxer. He was a hell of a boxer. I maintain that. He reminded me of Rinky Wright. He reminded me of uh, Joshua Clotty, his style. You know, he had that high guard. He really kicked that guard fully down. You know, Manny Pacquiao has something like that too, a high guard sort of thing that you do. Floyd sometimes go into it, really good, decent high guard. Buck the whole body and the head, you know, seal up everything. We work on that. So anyway, yes, so Marlon Sterling uh, beat Lloyd Hunnigan, and then Maurice Blocker beat Marlon Sterling. You can see Maurice Blocker again, 
and this is how long Maurice Blocker was around. Maurice Blocker get beaten by Simon Brown. Simon Brown was a, a legit, fantastic welterweight, and he even was a pretty decent super welterweight. Okay, Simon Brown. Then James Buddy McGurk beat Simon Brown. Pernell Whitaker beat James Buddy McGurk. Oscar De La Hoya beat Pernell Whitaker. And Felix Trinidad beat, actually, Simon, Maurice Blocker. He beat him for the IBF title. So Maurice Blocker went on to become an IBF world champion on top of that. So he was a two-time world champion. Anyway, Felix Trinidad, he beat Oscar De La Hoya. He moved up to, to um, super, super welterweight. So he vacated. And Shane Mosley in... in, in in 2000, 2002, he beat Oscar De La Hoya to become the lineal champion. And then he was beaten by Vernon Forrest. And then Vernon Forrest was beaten by Ricardo Mayorga. And Mayorga was beaten by Corey Spinks when they were trying to unify. Excuse me. And then Corey Spinks was beaten by Zab Judah. Zab Judah was beaten by Carlos Balamir. Balamir was beaten by Floyd Mayweather. Okay. When Mayweather retired from boxing... Shane Mosley became the lineal champion when he beat Antonio Margarito. Mayweather beat Shane Mosley. And then he retired from boxing just recently there, 2015. Manny Pacquiao beat Jesse Vargas to become lineal champion. So Manny Pacquiao is currently the lineal champion of the welterweight division. Which is why uh, the ring has it all wrong. Manny Pacquiao is the lineal champion. Then next is Keith Thurman. That's how it should, should be. So I wanted to show you guys this because the nice thing about lineal championships is you see the the passing on or the passing of the torch. It's not perfect. Sometimes guys retire or they vacate. But at the end of the day, the beauty of the lineal championship is to see the transition of power from one champion to the next. That's what the lineal championship is about. The undisputed boxing champion is supposed to help you understand who to really follow, who's the really the dude you should be following, but not always is it correct, all right, as with the lineal championship. So, for instance, as I say, for Adonis Stevenson, he's the lineal champion, or was, at least, the ring somehow stripped him, you can't strip a guy of being a lineal champion, you just can't. He is the lineal champion of the light heavyweight division, it's not the man of the division, right? With the undisputed boxing champion, they are considered the man of the division. But sometimes they avoid certain fighters, so you really can't call them the true champion of the division. And sometimes some of them, they, they lose the undisputed championship before they even defend it, so they can't be considered true champions either. So that's why I said to you, a true champion, I gave you the attributes of a true champion, so you can see that a true champion Combine some of the attributes of being undisputed. Combine some of the attributes of being a lineal champion. A true champion tries to beat the man of the division. That's how you know who the real champion of the division is. The other guys, they're champions too, but they're not as high up as this guy. Because that's why we have ranking systems. We have ranking systems so that you at least know who's the guy that's supposed to be at the top of any given division. Even though you may have a number of champions there... The, the, the chief champion or the arc champion or the prime champion is the dude at the top, right? And the prime champion would be the person who's rated number one in the division. Because you can be rated number one and not face everybody. You can't, I mean, it's impossible to face everybody, especially in every single era. There's always new champions or new people or new prospects coming up. So you can't fight everybody. So that's why I said there's a ranking system and even if you're not undisputed champion, because today is very difficult. As you know, when I was I was talking to another uh, gentleman who really knows his boxing on YouTube. Uh, shout out to him. Um, I forgot your name, my bro. I forgot your name. But you, you, you bring you bring diamonds, man. You bring gems every time I talk with you, man. But I'm I'm, I'm remember your name for the next video. Uh, and he he dropped some gems about. The politics of boxing stopping guys from being undisputed boxing champions. And if the politics of boxing is doing that, there's nothing you can do about it. Like Keith Thurman right now. He wants to get all of the belts and become undisputed welterweight champion of the world. He doesn't understand you got to deal with the politics of that. Because you want to have mandatories. 
You're going to have boxing sanctioning bodies who don't want you to be champion. They're going to strip you immediately. You know what I'm saying? Whether you pay sanction fees or not, they want, you know, they have a certain relationship with certain promoters. And so they want to keep that. So you have to understand that all of these intricacies also make it hard for somebody to be an undisputed boxing champion. But here's the thing. He gave a good example. I'm trying to remember his name right now. Natty Turner. Natty Turner. That's his name. Natty Turner. All right. He's a musician as well. He's a really cool dude. You all need to check out his channel. I'll try and put his link below. He knows his boxing, man. He knows his boxing, right? And um, quite frankly, man, he, he, he actually illustrated that Floyd should have been undisputed uh, welterweight world champion when he beat Zab Judah and when he beat Carlos Baldemir, but the politics of boxing. Now, he, he did beat the former undisputed uh, welterweight champion of the world, which was Zab Judah, right? And then he went on to beat the guy that beat him, which is Carlos Baldemir. So he should have been the undisputed welterweight champion of the world based on that. But because of politics, he never was that. And then my boy went and collected the belts the hard way. He collected first the. He should have been the WBA champion when he came back facing um, Shane Mosley. All right, he should have been. All right, he was the lineal champion because he beat Mosley. But he went the harder way. He went and he got the WBC belt from Victor Ortiz. All right, he got the WBA belt from uh, beating Marcos Madonna. and then he collected the WBO belt. By beating Manny Pacquiao, and they strip him of the WBO belt for no reason whatsoever. There's no reason why Floyd was stripped of the WBO belt. It's politics. They wanted top rank to have a title, and the welterweight to be fighting for a title. Otherwise, they would have to fight Al Heyman fighters. This was that was was a, I believe. That's my opinion. It's not it's not grounded in fact. By the way, that's an opinion now. Now, why I'm going into all of this and I'm talking to you guys about all these things is because. It's very hard to become an undisputed world champion today. There's too much politics. Floyd should have been one. Alright? And he went through the hard way, if you ask me. But in the process of going through the hard way, he was able to fight all of these desired fights. Shane Mosley. Juan Manuel Marquez. And he was fighting Marquez just really to prove a point about fighting Pacquiao. Y'all can't say nothing about... Again, I'm going to say it again. Y'all can't say nothing about Pacquiao would have beat Floyd in 2010 if they had fought. You saw the you saw the Marquez fight, and you saw the Pacquiao fight. Now, how was those two fights any different from one another? Same guys, same size, same dimension. Didn't Floyd say he was going to beat them easy? And he said he said he was going to beat Pacquiao easy. He beat him easy. He beat Marquez easy. That should have told y'all something. That's why he wanted to fight with Pacquiao. You think Floyd thought he would have lose that fight with Pacquiao? You thought he really seriously think so? You think Floyd was afraid of Pacquiao? I mean, the writing's everywhere. If you know any kind of boxing, you know Floyd would have whooped Pacquiao. He might have knocked him out. He might have knocked out Pacquiao. Because Pacquiao was very reckless coming in. He'd do that stutter step, stutter step, jump, 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 jump. Somebody jump into a punch. Whoosh! Whoosha! Like, like Ricky Atten, check hooked into the ropes. Gone to sleep. <laughs> he just used the force of his momentum to knock him out. Aikido 101. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway, my point anyway is this. For Floyd, it benefited him that Pacquiao, he didn't fight Pacquiao and end Pacquiao's career like that. Because what would have happened was, you saw what happened when Marquez knocked him out. <laughs> Hey, Pacquiao went running into Marquez's punch, and then Marquez, on top of that, was putting all the force of the world that he had <laughs> into knocking out Pacquiao. I'm telling you, man, Marquez pumped weights and all kind of thing. So when Pacquiao went to sleep, and he was sleeping for about a minute, <laughs> shoot, man, I think Marquez knocked his brain into the back of his skull, man. Oh my gosh, that was terrible. Marcus went for a home run. It was like, yeah, yeah, stutter step, stutter. I'm gonna tire of your tail. Whoosh! <laughs> he sent Pacquiao back into time. <laughs> no, sorry, I, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to joke about it. But a counter punch set you up to counter you, right? 
So just imagine Pacquiao running into a shot that Mayweather, you saw how good Mayweather was. Pacquiao wasn't running into those shots fully. He wasn't, he wasn't doing no stutter step and leaping into, uh, leaping into floor. Reckless Pacquiao would have gotten put to sleep. Put to sleep. If he was to fight Floyd in 2010. So it's a good thing he did. And the nice thing about it is he, he ended up facing Shane Mosley, Antonio Margarito in 2010. Uh, and onwards. Uh, he put a beating on Joshua Claudi. Claudi was hesitant to fight him. Built up his reputation. He, he really built up himself even bigger. You know, went up to super featherweight for Antonio Margarito. Yeah, so actually, it was it was a benefit to Pacquiao that Floyd didn't come and beat him up real bad, and then he got enough boxing skill to be cautious enough so he didn't get knocked out by Floyd. But he came he came flying in in the second round, and Floyd check hooked him into the ropes, and Floyd didn't even catch him properly. He catch him over the air. Pacquiao reaching in, and Pacquiao was like, "You know what? I'm not doing that no more." <laughs> <laughs> he respected Floyd from there on in, all right? Because Floyd was just—he was just waiting. He's like a—he was like a snake. He's just waiting for Pacquiao to overcommit. He was just waiting for it, you know. So I'm just saying, folks, you know, all of the lies and 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 the, and the nonsense. I and like I said before, Floyd is a dude who he does talk his good share of nonsense, right? Virgil Hunter ain't a good trainer. He's—you he, he, lost your mind, Floyd. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, Floyd also drops gems. He knows his boxing. He knows his boxing, man. Do be talking about how uh, Kevin Howard dropped Sugar Ray Robinson. You know, I think it was in the third or fourth round he dropped him. Right? And did I say Sugar Ray Robinson? Why do I keep on saying Sugar Ray Robinson, man? Sugar Ray Leonard, right? This is a long video, folks. So if you don't like long videos, you should have signed off a long time ago. I'm not, I'm not editing it. And my point anyway is this, right? A lot of the you boxing fans out there really don't know the sport of boxing. I'm not saying I am the know-all, see-all, I-all. But you need to be a knowledgeable fan at least of the sport of boxing. That's what I'm saying. Alright? On that note, you guys have a great one.